Hi everybody, this is Quinton from FitPro Q&A and today we're, we're here with Wayne Lobsher and Wayne has invited us to come and see what they do here at TriFocus um, Academy, Fitness Academy. Yep. And uh, TriFocus is one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, fitness school in the we'd country? Li we'd like to think so. We'd like to think we're top two. We'd like to think we're top two. Okay, yeah. all right. How many students do you currently have? So we have a large amount of our students are doing our courses through distance learning. Um, active students at the moment would be a difficult number to give you, honestly. Yeah. Um, we probably have over a thousand active students going at the moment. Obviously we have a large curriculum, so it's not just personal training courses that we do. We obviously do the yoga, Pilates, group exercise, boot camp, um, boxing. So we have a probably the largest curriculum available. So we have probably one of the largest student databases available. Um, Obviously our main focus is the personal training industry, the, um, so we do that through distance learning. We also have campuses around the country, obviously our head office here in Randburg, and then we do lectures in Pretoria as well as Cape Town. Okay, yeah. that's, that's very interesting. And you've been around for how long? So as a company in sort of mainstream fitness, it's been since 2012, prior to that we just specialized in Pilates courses. Um, but yeah, so since 2012 the college has been offering personal training qualifications. Um, I joined in the beginning of 2013. Um, and yeah, we've been sort of growing and growing ever since then. Okay, that's interesting. So it was a Pilates, mainly a Pilates. Yeah, training course. yeah. Initially, why, why did how did it expand? So it was a case of my directors had started the Pilates Academy, and then they saw a opportunity in the markets to sort of push to offer. I'm trying to think of the way the way to say this. We we wanted a way to come in and create affordable learning opportunities for for people. Um, one of the reasons they moved into personal training is a lot of the personal training courses were unaffordable to people unless you came from sort of higher income groups. Um, they stepped in to say, well, let's create an opportunity where people who have a passion for the industry but are not necessarily afforded the opportunity to study to get into the industry, that opportunity. Um, so we came in, I believe that we shook the market quite badly, um, which is a good thing. Yeah. And we've just sort of grown in a way just to try to create as much affordable opportunities for people to be able to study. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, we'll, our, our, our big thing is we'll always make something work for, all, for our student. Um, we have our sort of standard plans and arrangements, but if a student says to us, look, I can't do this, how can we help? Mm. We'll make something work. Okay. Yeah. And what are the most popular courses that you have at the moment? So our, our personal training qualifications are definitely the most popular. Um, at the moment, we, we again shook up the industry where we've now we no longer sell a course, we now sell a package. And again, it goes into trying to create opportunities where our students get the best opportunities. So for at the moment, for example, last year we'd sell you a personal training diploma, a personal training certificate, or a skills course. And now we sell packages. The idea is that if you sign up for, let's say, example, our personal training diploma, it's our highest level of personal training qualification, but we believe that personal training is not just what you need. You obviously need to be able to create a, a scope for yourself that will give you the best opportunity. So now if you take a personal training diploma, we'll include a group exercise instructor, boot camp instructor, we'll do sports psychology, life coaching, nutrition, social media management. So we're going to give you all the tools okay. that you s sign up for one course and you have all the tools available so that you can do everything from group classes to private training to be able to run your business effectively through social media, understanding the mental aspect of training athletes Okay. Yeah. So, so the, the 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 academy is a little bit different from, say, a, a, um, a, diff, a university or a, that that type yeah. of thing, or a Vega that teaches advertising and that sort of stuff. So you can do diff, mod, individual modules if you want to. So, so no. So you you do purchase a qualification. Obviously, the oh, qualification okay. is made up of different modules and unit standards, but also. The industry is not like higher education where you purchase like a three-year degree and you end up having to do a 360 credit qualification. The industry looks at sort of your certificates and diplomas. Um, and then from there, what the industry requires is for you to then build on. So it's pretty similar to almost like a doctor. You get your main qualification mm. and then you build on from there, just proving that you're trying to stay up to date in terms of what's happening. Okay. So somebody would do their personal training qualification and then obviously the industry is very broad. So they would find out where they're sort of passion follows and then they look at adding on short courses that will then build onto that skills. Okay. So your personal training qualification is like your foundation. It's the one that says I'm qualified, I know what I'm doing, I'm not going to hurt you and from there you build on. 
because not everybody's going to want to train bodybuilders. Not everyone wants to train athletes. Some yes. people want to train moms who want to lose weight. That's what their passion is. Yes. And then they'll do the courses that will follow them. Okay. Some people want to train bodybuilders, and they'll follow the courses that lead in that direction. So it's about getting your foundation qualification and then having the flexibility to move in a path that best suits you. Okay. Is it, is it a... Uh, a re um recognized sort of B degree, like a BA, a BCom or, so, or something to that? No, so, so your degrees fall under what's higher education. So higher education um, would be your universities like Vega, um, whereas most of the personal training qualifications fall under further education. There is an aspect of higher education, uh, for example, uh, the, higher, the higher certificate in personal training, uh, but there's no official B degree in terms of personal training unless you go into something like your Bachelor of Science in Sports Science, which again would be offered at a university. Very good qualification. At the end of the day though, if you go work for a commercial gym, the commercial gym is still going to require you to do a personal training qualification. Mm -hmm. um, so your sports science qualifications would be for people looking to go into biokinetics, physiotherapy, um, so sort of professional designations. Okay. And what do you find most of your stu students go on to do? So obviously our biggest uptake of students would be the commercial fitness industry. So your, mm -hmm. your chains like Virgin Active, Viva Gym, Planet Fitness, Go Health, um, Zone Fitness, they are the ones that sort of take on the majority of students because that's where the majority of the fitness industry is. Mm -hmm. um, the commercial setup where you'd have a facility that has 10 personal trainers per facility. Um, another avenue is a lot of students will end up going onto the cruise ships, um, especially the younger students, ones who are looking to sort of finish school, get a study and then go see the world. It's a mm -hmm. great opportunity for them to travel, earn some money, gain a lot of world experience and then come back and then decide whether they want to carry on within the fitness industry or if they want to branch out and do something else. Okay, that's uh, very interesting. Yeah. I wouldn't immediately think of that's, that's the next avenue to go. So yeah. is that, would you say that's the next biggest group after the, the, the branded gyms? Yeah, no, pr probably. Um, the reality is the, the commercial gyms eat up the students. If, mm. if, we, if we qualify 100 students, 80 of them will end up in a, in, in a wow. commercial fitness facility. Okay, yeah, uh, that big. It's where, the, it's where the money in the market is. Mm. That's mm. where it is generally made. The, the private gym industry is growing though. We've definitely seen an increase in terms of the number of your sort of specialist private gyms that are opening. Um, mm. Things like uh, performance gyms where people can specialize in doing athletic training or powerlifting or weightlifting or things like that. Mm. So that industry is definitely growing and it's starting mm. to put a bit of pressure on the commercial industry. Okay. But the commercial industry caters for the lifestyle and that, that, that is where the money is. Yes, yes. And the, and the progression, uh, do you find that people start off with uh, the commercial gym and spend two years there and then move on? Or? Yeah, a lot of it will really depend in terms of where the students' passion lies. So obviously the, the commercial gyms are a great place to sort of cement yourself. And mm. It's a way for you to establish what are you good at, what do you like to do, what do you not like to do. If your passion is the bodybuilding training, generally you'll end up staying in a commercial gym. But mm. generally people who are more involved in sort of the performance-driven athletic training, um, if they've got opportunities in their vicinity that will allow them to move out, they generally do. Mm. Um, your commercial gyms are where sort of you, you, you decide whether this is your industry or not. Mm -hmm. and, and do you think it's st still in this day and age it's financially viable to, to start a fitness <laughs> business? <laughs> it's, it's a tough question one I get from my parents or I'll, 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 not my parents, my <laughs> students' parents all the time. Yes. So the reality is, is when you become a personal trainer you actually are becoming an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the commercial market dictates that when you're a personal trainer inside a, a Virgin Active or a Planet Fitness is that you actually become a tenant of the gym. You're not an employee. So the idea is you'd pay a rental and then you've got access to the club. That is where you decide whether you make money or not. Mm. The reality is you starting a business. Mm. The product you're selling is your training, but you still have to market, network, mm. develop and grow the business. So yes. we find the students who understand that and have a good people's personality and a good sales personality mm. do exceptionally well. Mm. Um, we, we often get stories of people who've qualified and a year later they're working in dad's company. Okay. The reason being is they wanted to be a personal trainer because they thought wearing tracks with pants and a t-shirt was cool. <laughs> that, that, that's, uh, that's which what which I'll, it is, right? <laughs> look, it, it is. But the, the, they think that, okay, I'll qualify as a trainer, I'll go work in a Virgin Active or a Planet and um, money will come to me. Yes. And the reality is that's not how it works. Your first year is hard work, but it's like any other business. Put on a lot of hard work in your first two years and you can make a good success for yourself. Mm. I know stories of trainers, brilliant trainers, who don't get the marketing and the business side of it, who at 28 years old might still be living at home. Mm. 
And I know of other trainers who at 28 are earning three figures a month. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so, but they, they, those are in the minority. But I think it's it's probably the, uh, a reflection of life, right? Yeah. Look, it's uh, look. The, yeah. The, look, the reality is three figures a month is is a minority. But mm. the I mean, for for most kids, 26 years old, starting their first sort of full time career, the reality is you can earn enough money to move out, mm. buy a car, support yourself. Mm. It's there. It's available. Yeah. But it requires hard work. Yes. Um, that's one of the things that we always try to get across to the students when they register. Uh, make sure that they understand that what they're getting into can be extremely rewarding. There's, mm -hmm. nothing, there's nothing quite as satisfying as helping somebody who decided that they could not do a pull-up mm. to get them to do a pull-up. <laughs> yeah. The job satisfaction is there. I don't know, obviously, we need job satisfaction, but we also need social, I mean, economic security. Correct. Yeah. Um, they understand that the satisfaction's there. The economic security requires hard work. Yeah, and I, and I think that's what I also find with a, with a lot of the interviews uh, that I speak to personal trainers or gym owners. They can talk for hours about the you know uh, about how they train and how they transform people's lives and those sort of things. And yeah. that's that's essentially your passion. That's that's the reason why a lot of them get in. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, when it comes to the business side, that's that's often the lacking part. Well, look, I mean, the reality is we all need to eat. I mean, if <laughs> if, if life was just about satisfying your passions, everything would be easy. Um, <laughs> Yeah. But as long as as long as we always try educate students to say that look what you're doing is effectively starting a business. It's mm. it's it's creating opportunity for you to dictate what you earn. Mm. Um, and as long as they understand that, most of them will do generally quite well. Yes, yes. Um, do you find a lot of your your students also find their way on into to doing online training? Because I think that's sort of the next level, isn't it? In terms of so online training is has has become a big thing. Um, the the sort of social media has really driven the ability for you to train somebody thousand miles away quite easy. Um, we obviously help prepare our students for that in terms of some of our courses we, we focus on doing social media management so how to, how to handle your Instagrams and your Facebooks and all that to generate business revenue mm. so that you're able to do online training. Um, online training we generally always recommend for somebody to rather sort of get their teeth into the industry doing face to face. Online training can be very effective. Mm. Um, but at the same time, it's, it requires experience. Mm. Um, it's very difficult for me to say to somebody that I've never seen face to face, mm. look, you need to change your squat. You sent me a video from one angle, <laughs> yeah. um, so therefore you need to make these changes. Yeah. That comes with experience. Yes. Um, so we generally recommend to, for students to you know, spend your first year in the trenches, face to face, working with clients, developing your people skills. Yeah. If you naturally start picking up online clients and you're good at it, by all means, pursue it. it. It's where the fitness industry is. Mm -hmm. Online training really has become the largest proponent of it. Yeah. Um, I myself, obviously, I follow a lot of people overseas. That, that's where we sort of try to get them our information. And we see, we see coaches now who specialize in face-to-face -face and have now developed online learning platforms. They've, mm -hmm. they've developed these um, platforms, um, companies, things like Trainerize, mm -hmm. have made online training extremely accessible and easy. Still, we recommend get your teeth in the market, mm. and then go on from there. Go on from there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Wayne, why is it important for, for people to do a course? Why can't I just, um, you know, buy a bunch of equipment and go into my garage and start, <laughs> start a gym? Well, look, look, there's nothing that that's, is really stopping you, but other than the fact that there is a lot of risk on your side. So, in order to understand the importance of accreditation, we've got to go back a couple of years. So years ago, you used to be able to do your Reebok personal training qualifications. Look, that one was still a good one, but there was a, there was a number of personal training qualifications that I heard of that you could become a personal trainer in seven days. Mm. So generally what happens within the education sector, um, and specifically within the industries, is the industry will create a demand. So people obviously saw a need for personal trainers, so people started saying they're personal trainers. Uh, we saw guys who were bodybuilders. They had no real knowledge other than what they had developed through their own trials and errors. Started calling themselves trainers, started charging for it. Uh, what happens is eventually the, the industry becomes unregulated. Mm. So everybody says they're a personal trainer. So a company will come along and say, okay, we've developed a course. Here's your personal training qualification. And that can range anywhere from seven days to two years. There's mm. no regulation on it. Eventually what happens is the government steps in and they say, hey, listen, this, this is now a whole bunch of cowboys running around. <laughs> They're just shooting off their guns. We need to control this. So they then, along with the CETAs and SACO and all that, they create these frameworks that say that if you want to call yourself a personal trainer, 
you must have a qualification that falls along these routes. Mm. The reason for that is to make sure that people aren't doing a seven-day course and trying to charge the same amount of money as somebody who's maybe spent two years studying, somebody mm. who's really put on a lot of effort and time. Um, the industry then sort of comes around and latches onto the fact there's accreditation, and mm. they start saying, and it's specifically in the commercial industry, they say, okay, fantastic, if you want to work for us, you need to have an accredited qualification. And it comes down to purely risk. Um, if Virgin Active or Planet Fitness, Viva Gym, if they take me on as a personal trainer, if I don't have the right qualification and I injure a client, mm. the client can A, sue me in my yep. personal capacity, okay. and B, they can also sue the, the gym for having me mm. in there as an unqualified professional. Mm. So in terms of getting accredited qualifications, it's important to make sure, specifically in personal training, that you get courses that are accredited by CATHETA. Mm. and by reps and reps is the register of exercise professionals okay so cat is obviously your local government accrediting body um, they are they are the ones who've designed the courses aligned with the SACWA frameworks so mm -hmm. that you know you're getting all the right credits and unit standards and that covered reps is then sort of your industry body and your international accreditation um, so rep south africa is part of the international confederation of reps so okay. they're an international body that governs fitness qualifications worldwide. Mm. The idea that is if I qualify with a reps qualification in South Africa and I decide to immigrate, mm. it's really easy for me to take my qualification and go overseas. I get a letter that explains mm. what the qualification is and how I can use it in that country That's and I don't awesome. have to worry about doing any external exams or things like that. Mm. The advantages of reps though as well is also reps then maintain forces personal trainers to maintain their standards. So mm -hmm. they have to do continuous professional development points. Okay. Um, so those are short little courses each year. It's normally about 24 points a year, but just to prove that they are learning, that they're staying yes. up to date, that they're not just resting on their laurels of a qualification they did four years ago. <laughs> um, and then reps will also then assist and guide personal trainers in terms of getting liability insurance. Mm -hmm. Liability insurance is really, it's, it's a terrible thing to have. Because mm -hmm. the reality is, at some stage, you more than likely will injure a client, and hopefully your clients understand that injuries happen. But at some stage, somebody can always turn around and say, look, it's your fault. You told me to do this. Mm. I'm hurt now. Mm. Now you're going to pay for my medical yes. bills. And that can easily run into the millions. Yeah. Um, that's so, what so a lot for. of people are, uh, or personal trainers, uh, if they're not in a commercial gym, do they have to have insurance for themselves? Or so, do you recommend that? So look, it's always going to be recommended. Um, we tell everybody that no matter where you're training, get some sort of cover for yourself. Because it, we would never like to think that somebody would be like that. Mm. But the reality is anybody can turn around and say, look, I'm blaming you for, for hurting me. Mm. Um, the commercial gyms sort of insist on it. Even the private gyms are going to insist on it. And the, the gyms themselves will have cover as well. But mm. if you're going to, for example, start your own business where you travel to somebody's house and you do housewife training at their homes, mm. you need that cover. Mm. Um, you can do it in your personal capacity. It becomes very expensive. But doing it through bodies like reps does bring the cost down, which mm. then obviously makes it better for you as, uh, as the personal trainer. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's quite an important aspect that I think a lot of people don't think, uh, think yeah. about uh, in the, for, for, in, when you become a fitness trainer. Um, can you uh, think of a, of a couple of um, personal trainers or people who've gone on six, uh, quite successfully from TriFocus, which are your star students? Uh, um, <laughs> so we've, I've got uh, Brett Paul from it, and he's one of our brand ambassadors. He's actually working in Dubai at the moment. Okay. Um, so he's started, he's got his own very successful fitness company in Dubai. Um, I've got another, uh, he's actually an ex friend, well, he's a friend of mine, uh, one of our ex-students, uh, Warren Eben, he's a personal trainer at Virgin Active. He's, he's one of my go-to success stories. Um, mm. He was a late bloomer, changed career from a, from the, I think it was a car sales industry, mm -hmm. into personal training industry and made an absolute huge success for himself. Um, Look, we, we've probably got a lot out there. Yeah. For, for, for us to try to keep track is very difficult. Yeah. I, I can only really tell you about the people that I personally know. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but, but as you say, th those, are, those are guys who understood uh, business as well as, yeah. as just being very good at, at personal. Yeah, yeah. So, as I said, we always say, I always tell people it's like business. If, if, your, if your business skills are good and mm. your product is average, you can still do incredibly well. Mm. We sell you a product that you are able to then sell on to somebody else. We give you the skills and we try training in terms of how to grow that business. Mm. Uh, at the end of the day though, it's hard work. Mm. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you also mentioned that you've, you've joined uh, forces with a, a digital marketing company recently. So yeah, so, so we, obviously my, my directors, they're, they're 
focus is to create education that's affordable. Um, mm. They've branched into the digital arena, so mm. we now have a, another college called the Digital School of Marketing, mm -hmm. which focuses really on your sort of brand management, digital marketing, mm. uh, SEO courses, um, mm. online courses that make studies, again, affordable and available. Yes, yeah. yeah. Do you find a lot of the students uh, can is, are able to combine you know, fitness training as well as then the marketing side of things. So one of the things that we actually did on purpose is we took the social media management course from that college and we've actually adapted it into our, into the fitness industry. So okay. it's tailored for fitness professionals. Mm. The course is available for anybody to register for. As I said, if you do our personal training diploma, we'll actually give it to you for free. Mm. Um, and we make it available for people so that they have those extra additional skills, mm. so that they're able to understand that going on onto Instagram with a photo of you doing a bicep curl and saying mm. hashtag swall mm. is okay. <laughs> but we can teach you how to do proper keyword searches, how to do proper boosts, how to make sure that when you put on that photo of yourself that the right people are seeing it. Mm. Mm. Social media drives the industry. Yes. Uh, word of mouth social media. So your ability to network face to face and your ability to promote yourself mm. in a way that stands positive with your brand is really what is going to sort of important. drive your, your ability to meet people, to grow your business, yes. to turn yourself into something like that. And I, th I think it's also, even uh, from a, a digital marketer point of view, for, for myself, uh, I think it's always good, even if a, a client understands it more about what you're doing, yeah. even if they don't want to do it themselves, uh, if they have that basic understanding, it, it just helps the whole yeah, process. Yeah, no, 100%. You know, it's, it's one of those things, we'll always encourage people to try gain as much knowledge on everything within their industry. So, mm. personal training the industry is training but no there's a lot more that goes into it so the more mm. knowledge that we can provide to our mm. students the better it is for them okay excellent. at the end of the day we want our students to go out saying look I've got the best opportunity available yes. I can do everything okay brilliant so Wayne uh, if, if anybody's interested in, in uh, maybe finding out a little bit more about TriFocus where can they go so obviously we do have our social media channels on Facebook and Instagram um, our website is probably the way where you can get really pretty much all the information that you need. Um, okay. Website is www.trifocusfitnessacademy.co.za. Okay. On the website, you can check all our courses. You can see there are entry forms where you can query on every course. We get back to you on the same day that you do your inquiry. You can do your registrations on the website as well. Mm. Um, we're really trying to just make everything as easy as possible for our students. Okay, excellent. And if people want to get hold of you personally? So you can call through to our office. We've got okay. a toll-free number, which is 0861-444-765. Um, automatically come through to the sales department. Otherwise, we can direct you to our student support. Oh. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Wayne. I appreciate you taking the time. Oh, thank to you very to much. I appreciate and, uh, it. Yeah, it was very informative, and it, it sounds like TriFocus is the way to go. Well, that's what we'd like, <laughs> we'd like to think so. <laughs> thank you very so, much. So thank you very much. Cheers. Cool.